people were a little bit more interested in the images of themselves and the social currency of getting the fan of the day. Um, within Facebook, an individual's profiles, how they choose to visually represent themselves within the virtual community. Um, so the fact that people want to identify with Dunkin' Donuts, that being a Dunkin' Donuts fan in your cyber identity is almost like a badge that you are unpretentious, fun, irreverent. That, that to us was striking, and really we've just seen uh, you know, the groundswell of this, and it's been, it's been incredible. Um, you know, these, are not, these are not ads, these are people who, who are doing this on their own. And we, we found out that you know, after the sweepstakes was over, oh, by the way, just to give you an indication of what kind of uh, results the sweepstakes had. So we had, I think it was about 140 people who actually uh, did the submission correctly, which would, uh, we found out was probably an extra step than necessary. But again, this is all about experimentation. And part of it was changing their profile pic. The other part was then uploading it to our wall. So it was asking two steps. So we had 140 or so submissions that were valid. Not that many in the grand scheme of things. But based on that 140, more than 35,000 people were exposed to an image of their friend with a pulada, which indicated implied endorsement. When you change your image, that goes up in your news feed. Um, so in theory, the perception of the Dunkin' Donuts brand was then potentially influenced through this exposure. This concept is consistent with our approach to social relationship marketing, where advocacy grows economics. And bam, this was the this is the reward right here. There's another uh, keep it culotta guy. They both uh, wear the sunglasses, so that's part of the culotta. Anyway, obviously, keep it culotta. Culotta is a frozen beverage line, and uh, and uh, the demo skews younger, so we thought that Facebook would be a great opportunity to experiment with this kind of a, uh, a program. Anyway, the idea now lives on in our fan of the week. And even at, without this true sweepstakes incentive, the prizes, we receive photos every week from fans who want to be the Dunkin' Donuts fan of the week. And it really is um, seeing people with, you know, Dunkin' Donuts as a part of their lives. This guy right here, had just run a marathon, decked out in his Dunkin' Donuts, keep you running shirt. Um, this guy right here posted 150 images of himself in front of different Dunkin' Donuts across the U.S. Uh, that one I'm fan of the week. Uh, she has a vanity plate, I believe it's uh, run on DD, and she's got a couple bumper stickers. That would make her fan of the week. Fan of the week. Big fan of the week. Somebody's contemplating Dunkin' Donuts in their office. Fan of the week. Fan of the week. This is a couple 30th anniversary, and they took a whole video of themselves and how Dunkin' Donuts has something to do with their lives. Fan of the week. <laughs> this is a, another twist on Fan of the Week we did called Yeti of the Week, where uh, it was actually a regional promotion. Uh, we're supporting iced coffee in the winter, and we were able to, uh, you know, get national reach and international reach for that matter. Uh, it's a take on the uh, the, the Sasquatch, uh, where where you know the abominable snow, snowman. Anyway, the idea was uh, that folks would take images of themselves in the snow, drinking iced coffee in the winter, uh, promoting iced coffee, of course. Uh, there's another Yeti of the week, a nice image of uh, uh, the woman with her with her. Adorable baby, snowboarding guy. This is after Yeti of the Week was over, but people were still into the whole Yeti of the Week thing. Uh, this is uh, a nice shot. Looks uh, a lot like an advertisement. And here's the guy. <laughs> 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 Speaks for itself. We uh, have a. We were running a contest right now. Actually, the submissions are now over, but um, it's a. We'll have online voting soon where you can create your own uh, donut. And again, we brought back the time to make the donuts from Fred the Baker. And here's a guy who actually took his virtual creation and then made it a reality and put all the ingredients on the table. And he took a lot of other images. And uh, he would be obsessive and he won Fit of the Week. Uh, bridal party outside of Dunkin' Donuts. And again, back to that idea about that looks like an ad. And this is just one of our. This is one of our loyal fans. Took the time to post this image of herself 
uh, we didn't pay a dime for this image, and, and it's an incredible shot. And this is the way, you know, giving her this reward of Fan of the Week was something that was very exciting to her and a lot of other fans, so pandemonium. So to remember, when you get in there, it is about your fans first, or your consumers, or your customers, or whatever your brand uh, revolves around, which most likely is probably other people. Um, and they're your brand ambassadors. Allow them to tell your story through themselves. If you you might be familiar with the idiom, uh, a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, here's more uh, free material that people put on our Facebook page. Uh, they want to show us how Dunkin' Donuts is part of their life. There's a woman with a tattoo of a Dunkin' Donuts coffee cup. Guy taking a swim with his Dunkin' Donuts coffee. This is a crew member. Uh, they are also our brand ambassadors, a very huge part of our organization. So it's a it's a great thing when we see them interacting with us on there. People have dogs and pets, and I don't know if they like Dunkin' Donuts or not, but uh, people put these shots up. So it's about the fans first. Um, anyway, there's a lot we can go into. Uh, it's a really exciting area. A lot of opportunities uh, for us. This was just these were a couple of the seemingly uh, easy ways to get into it and see how it would work. And I think that you know there's a lot of interest now from many different areas in the company, uh, all realizing that they that they're stakeholders in this because it's an extension of the company. It's an extension of the marketing mix. Um, and I think really the takeaways from this is your brand ambassadors are your brand. If they're not fun, irreverent, uh, then we are not doing it right. Then they don't feel the way that we want them to feel about the brand. So this is a reflection of our brand. And if it's not the way we want it, we would either have to fix it or embrace the way that we were seeing it. So embrace your brand ambassadors, listen to them, and learn from them. Then speak with them or engage with them, not at them. It's not messaging. Sure, I get out information about products. Uh, and other, you know, relevant national uh, deals or, or, or uh, company information. But for the most part, it is that give and take. It is that back and forth. Get comfortable with the unknown. Uh, now is really the time to experiment and discover your brand's social identity if you don't already know your identity. Um, and a lot of times that social identity, like I said, is already your existing identity. And don't worry so much about the shark-infested waters, the negative people saying bad things about your company. Um, there's a lot of noise out there. Uh, if the negative feedback is prevalent, or if the negative feedback isn't prevalent for that matter, this is real-time feedback. This is really valuable stuff that you know people pay for focus groups to, to, to glean these kind of insights. So uh, you can really, really learn a lot from your consumers and take the, take the positive from that negative. Um, and again, we've got, we've got the shot here of, uh, of the fonts jumping the shark. A lot of people say, well, why should we do Twitter? Why should we do Facebook? Not as much Facebook than Twitter, but whatever the space might be. YouTube, whatever you feel is appropriate, whatever you have the bandwidth to manage, just try, get into something, experiment. And that's really, you know, we've invested a lot of time in Twitter. We know this kind of interaction is going to continue regardless of whether Twitter does or not. Now, Twitter's had a lot more staying power than I probably would have guessed back in October 2008. Uh, so it really don't you can't really worry so much about the long term uh, regarding where you are having these kind of interactions. It's just more about long term. The reality is you're probably going to have to have these communications and interactions. Thank you.